Hey, this is Travis Dammy. I'm a drummer on the Night Watch and the lead sound producer for the Night for the Night Watch. I'm here today to tell you to give you some tips on getting a good mix in your in ears. First things first, always have both in ears in all the way. Um, that'll give you the best bass response and treble response, so that you can hear everything as accurately as possible, and it gives you the most accurate representation of volume. If you have one ear out, it always seem might seem like it's quieter, so you might turn your volume up a little bit more. You run the risk of damaging your hearing. Some other recommendations I have specifically for the mixer are I recommend starting every channel at less than half volume. I have channels 1 through 8 selected and I want to start everything at just a little less than half volume so that I have plenty of room to turn everything up. And then from there Turn whatever channels, like if you're a singer, acoustic guitar player, drummer, whatever, take your channel. I'm a drummer, so I'm going to take the drums, and I'm going to turn them up so they're almost double the volume of everything else. So because nobody needs to hear me as much as I need to hear me. If I'm a singer, I need to be able to hear my pitch, my intonation. Um, so I want to hear myself louder than anybody else would. Then from there, what I would do is I would take the specific channels that I know I need to hear. The worship leader, their instrument, and um, since I'm a drummer, I would want to hear the bass player a little bit more than the other instrument so I can play off the bass player. So I'll turn the bass player up a little bit, and if I had an acoustic guitar worship leader, these channels aren't labeled, but the acoustic guitar, if they were at position one, would be channel seven and eight. A lot of times I'll leave them at about the same volume as everything else and adjust my master volume to get them to where I can hear their voice really good. And then I'll adjust things from there, like if the electric guitar or keyboard is too loud, I'll turn them down rather than turning the worship leader up. I like to have kind of my middle ground be a little bit less than halfway. After getting volume set so that you don't have to worry about anything, maxing any channels out. Um, is I would adjust my pan settings. Um, because I'm a drummer, I'll keep the drums, the bass, and the click in the middle. Everything else I'll pan off to one side or the other. I usually take the worship leader and I'll take their instrument and their vocal a little off to, to my left ear. I'll take the singers and I would take them a little bit to my right ear so that um, whenever my team is doing double choruses, I can pick out the double chorus and be able to start playing off of the double chorus before everybody joins on. Um, so I take the, my worship leader to the left, to the left, and singers a little bit to the right. And then I take the prayer leader, I'll put them a little farther to the right um, from where the singers are. Uh, from there, a lot of times I'll pan based on where things are on stage. I have drums, bass, keys one, a lot of times I'll put the keys farther to the left than the worship leader. So the worship leader is a little bit to the left. I'll take the keys and uh, the keys vocal, if there's somebody singing there, I'll take them a little bit farther to the left so that they're separated from the acoustic guitar and the worship leader's vocal. So the worship leader has its own spot in my mix. Um, another thing I would do is if I had two keyboardists, if I had keys one, keys two, um, I might take them to opposite sides. So take keys left, the keys one all the way to the left, keys two all the way to the right, um, so that they're separated in my mix. If I was a keyboard player, and um, I would probably have myself dead center, and then I would maybe take the other keyboard player and I would pan it to one side or the other. Like if they're sitting on my right, I might put them on the right side. And then um, one thing I want to make sure is that. I don't pan them so far away that I can't blend with them. I don't want them to feel separate. I want to be able. I want the keyboards to feel as one instrument. That's subjective, so you can experiment with that. But if something sounds similar to you, maybe try putting it so it's not totally separate, but so that you can still blend with it. Um, a good tip that you can use, though, is if you 
uh, if your worship leader uses the talk back, talk back a lot, is to pan it off to one side so that it grabs your attention whenever they use it. Um, my worship team doesn't use the talk back very much, so I just leave it centered and can usually get away with that pretty good. Um, with the electric guitar, I would usually take it even farther to the right than I had the singers and the prayer leader so that my keys are on the left, electric guitar on the right, so I can hear the distinct things that they're doing, rhythms that they're doing, so I can play off of it from the drums. A tip that uh, a singer that I know who always is able to prophesy and um, hear themselves in the avium, um, they told me how they set up their panning in their mix, and what they do is they have their volume, the volume of themselves, um, comparable to where they have everybody else, but they pan themselves um, all the way to one side. Um, I'm not exactly sure the logic behind it, but how it can maybe help you hear yourself is you're used to hearing yourself dead center. So if you move yourself to one side, it'll help you, uh, could help you hear pitch a little bit more clear. Uh, might take a little bit of getting used to, but it's something to try out. The Roland M48 system has reverb. Turn reverb on, and then you can turn reverb up in any channel. So let's say I want reverb on the prophetic singers. Turn it up a little bit and be able to hear that. Um, the, the M48 system also has EQ controls. Talk to your sound tech about getting the most use out of the EQ controls. I recommend starting uh, with just moderate settings, so not tweaking it too much and just see how it sounds. Um, the benefit of the M48 is it's supposed to sound significantly better than what we've been using. So um, you should be hearing stuff more accurately than you were before. Um, once again, keep both in ears in to get the most benefit out of the M48. Another feature that's cool with the M48 is it had an ambient mic feature. So sing singers, can hear what their voice sounds like, um, not through the microphone. So right in front of them, if they're singing, they can turn up the ambient mic, hear not only themselves, but everything going on in the room. Benefit for worship leaders, they can hear the response of the room with clapping, dancing, singing, and um, possibly lead accordingly. Uh, so get some use out of that. Hope that helps.